to worship this morning. It's good to be back here with you in worship. I was here last Sunday uh, when Pastor Terry was here, so I got to see some of you, but it's good to be back and uh, back in, in the saddle, so to speak. We had a great, great time holidaying. We holidayed and camped and fished and all kinds of good things. So visited relatives, so there's lots of, lots of wonderful things on the holidays. So now we're just back at it. I have so much energy that we should be out of here by one. <laughs> oh, that's good. So uh, we're going, I think today is the fifth Sunday after Pentecost, and we're going to be uh, considering the text of the, of the Good Samaritan and the idea of who our neighbor is. We're going to be talking about that today. We're going to be using, uh, setting one of the red hymnal as our guide for service today. We're not communion, but we're going to be using it as our guide. You'll find that service also up on the screen. So you, we're going to begin with our brief order of confession and forgiveness. That's on page 94 in the front of the red hymnal, or again up on the screen. I invite you to rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May the Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our gathering hymn is number 532, Gather Us In. Give us the 
Continue on page 98 in the front of the red hymnal. <laughs> Setting one. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Our Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. And our hymn of praise, the glory to God. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father. Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the 
world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Let us pray together our prayer of the day. O oh Lord God, your mercy delights us, and the world longs for your loving care. Hear the cries of everyone in need, and turn our hearts to love our neighbors with the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated, and we'll continue with the first lesson. The first reading is taken from Amos chapter 7, verses 7 to 17. This is what he showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. Now therefore hear the word of the Lord. You say, Do not prophesy against Israel, and do not preach against the house of Isaac. Therefore thus says the Lord, Your wife shall become a prostitute in the city, and your sons and your daughters shall fall by the sword. And your land shall be parceled out by line. You yourself shall, shall die in an unclean land. And Israel shall surely go into exile away from its land. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. No special music. I don't think she's here. No. Second reading is a letter of Paul to the Colossians, Colossians chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ and Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. 
just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learn from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I invite you to rise as you are able for a gospel acclamation, page 102. <laughs> Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your, and, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers, who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him. When I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend." Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. Thinking of neighbor today just thinking of neighbor. Uh, I want to start with a story. I shared this story in Cabri for Epiphany Sunday, but this happened to me back in November. Uh, back in November, I was uh, very interested in that comet that was passing by. You know, that very close comet. It was uh, bright in the sky. They said it was the closest, or asteroid, I should say, and it was the closest one to Earth in well, I think ever kind of a thing. So uh, I'm always interested in those kinds of things. And I was tinkering in the garage a Sunday night and I finally, oh, I forgot about to look at that comet. And it was almost 11. It was actually, it was quarter after 11 already. And so I 
grab my spotting scope. I have a spotting scope, so and it just has a very short stand on it, very short, you know, tripod. And so I usually do these things from my backyard, set up my spotting scope and try and see whatever star, whatever I can see. But I couldn't happen to see the the asteroid that was coming by because of the neighbor's tree and the house and all that. So I thought, well, I'll move it into the front yard. So I moved into the front yard and uh, tried to set it up and no, there's still there was another neighbor's tree in the way and I couldn't see it. So I walked right down to the front of my driveway and uh, kneeled down and got the spotting scope set up and I still couldn't see it. Still couldn't see it. So couldn't get it lined up. So finally it was yeah, it was probably zero minus five out, but I was dressed warmly. So I laid right down on my my garage driveway, or my, my driveway out front, laid right down, and I'm looking at this asteroid, having a little fun at some astronomical phenomena. And uh, the neighbor, the second door down neighbor, uh, she's coming home with a friend. And she drove home. And uh, they pulled up in her driveway, and I saw them pull up in the driveway, and I thought it was all fine. And then I saw the car pull out and drive past me, and they went, but the person, the car was going a little slow, so I just waved at them and thought they'd just see what I was doing. And the, uh, just kept watching the asteroid, and then the car came back, and they rolled down the window, and they said, are you okay? Because we called 911. <laughs> No! <laughs> I was just looking at the asteroid. I said, I'm okay. And so they were right on the line with, uh, uh, what do you call that, OnStar. And they were right on line with that. And uh, they said, oh, he was just looking at the asteroid. Everything's okay. And they canceled it. And about 30 seconds later, you know, the ambulance drives by <laughs> just checking to make sure everything's okay. I apologized profusely to her because, of course, I was doing something that was maybe out of the norm. And she apologized, too. But uh, the one thing that stuck out in my mind that she said, well, you know, at least you have neighbors that are looking out for you. Yeah, and I thought, yep, that's right. Because she said she wasn't sure if it was a drunk laying on the street or if it was me having a heart attack or what it was, right? Or a combination both thereof, maybe. So... Um, but it, but it was good that, like I say, she was looking out for me, and she cared, which, which was very important. So we had a good chuckle about it. And I, I met her just a few days ago, too, and we talked about that and had a lot of fun with it. So it actually built up some good relationships, uh, better relationships between the two of us, because now we have something we can laugh about, right, and something that we can connect with. And so getting to know our neighbor and who our neighbor is and looking out for our neighbor, these things are all connected together with a common cause, I think. You know, do we care about our neighbors? Do, do we know our neighbors? It's not necessarily that we know our neighbors really well, but do we care? Do we look out? Uh, who is our neighbor? Do we uh, understand our neighbors? You know, the, that type of thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, for sure. So, uh, you know, and another story I have, I remember uh, we were coming back from Lac Pelche one time, and maybe I've told this story before, coming back from Lac Pelche, and I always have a hydraulic jack and a, a spanner wrench, you know, in the back of my truck for changing a flat tire, tr boat trailer or whatever. And so I was coming back, and a young couple had a flat tire on the side of the road, and they were just standing there. And I said, well, you know, I've got a jack in the back of my truck. I got a spinner wrench. I said, I can have that off for you in no time flat, and we'll get your spare back on, and away we go. Nope. No thanks. And I said, Are you sure? I said, I, I could fix it soon. Mm -hmm. Nope. No thanks. We've called someone. Yeah, well, you know, that's our modern day thing of being wary of strangers, right? That's our modern day thing about who is our neighbor and who, who can we trust as our neighbor? You know, who knows what happens on the road? So I reluctantly drove away, but what else could you do? They said they had help coming. It wasn't cold out, so it was fine. But, uh, you know, that's our dynamic in our world today. It seems uh, that that sense of uh, helping our neighbor and being a neighbor is being challenged by, you know, individualism, protectionism, 
self-protectionism. Uh, you know, uh, how do we build a, how do we build community? You know, how do we build community and raise up community when we have that, you know, just keeping to our own and protecting ourselves? And, you know, and unfortunately, it's, it's because, you know, maybe the world isn't as safe as it used to be. Uh, when we look at international, when we look internationally with uh, the countries around the world, uh, so some are good neighbors, uh, some are neighborly, and uh, some we're not very good neighbors with at all, and some aren't very good neighbors with us. You know, when you see all this stuff happening in, in the news, you wonder what it's all about. And most of the time, you know, I think it's because we don't understand one another, it's about self-protectionism, uh, power, corruption, these types of things, right? And they, they, pre they, they uh, prevent us from acting fully together progressively for the world and the people in it, right? It, I think it stops us and it protects us that way. Or the, the protectionism stops us from reaching out that way. A couple of little snippets I have. So... Uh, just about neighbors. Nothing makes you more tolerant of a neighbor's noisy party than being there. Yeah, it's pretty easy to put up with when you're the one of the people there, that's for sure. So, you know, uh, getting, getting involved, being part of community means more than uh, just being at our neighbors, but being involved in, in issues, being involved in uh, our society, putting ourselves out there, right? I mean, that, that's who we are as Christians. We're not called to protect ourselves. You know, that's not what Christ did on the cross. He went out there for us, you know, so, so we would not be afraid that we would have no fear, and that we would build community. And another little snippet about neighbors. Neighbors, it says, the only people who listen to both sides of an argument is your neighbor. <laughs> yeah, so when you're arguing with your loved ones or whatever, it's only the neighbor that hears two sides of an argument. And that's an important piece, I think, as well. Uh, knowing both sides of a, an issue or the multiple sides, the fullness of issues, and knowing the fullness of who our neighbors are. We struggle with all kinds of issues today. Um, in the sense of uh, interfaith dialogue. I was watching a little snippet, uh, Eunice, I'm sure you heard this at the National Convention. Uh, there's a little portion yesterday morning, I was watching the live webcast of the National Convention on uh, interfaith dialogue and, and getting to know our neighbor. And uh, Reverend Sean Bell, who has supplied here once or twice, I believe, uh, he was speaking because he's the chaplain at Luther College in Regina. And he used the term that was interesting. I think it was called faith interfaith fluency, I think is what he used. Um, and, and he started with some very basic things at Luther College and built a very strong relationship with the Sikh and Muslim community on campus just by not, not approaching it like uh, with all the differences first. But he got at it from something very common that all people enjoy. His comment was, you know, he says, I thought we as Lutherans had the, the, the situation locked on the food thing. But he says, I found out that the, the Sikhs are also pretty good at the food thing. And, and you know what? So are the Muslims. Uh, so that was one of the ways that they started to make connections, right? How do you make connections and get to know? And I think part of this is simply fear and, and not understanding. And I think that's what uh, Sean was getting at there was that sense of simple conversations first, getting to know, getting to understand that we are all God's people, you know, and, and uh, the self-protectionism and the things we see going on in the world, factions building, is, is really that protectionism, right? And, and it's breaking down community, not building up. But ironically, I think they actually think they're protecting community, but it's actually breaking our community down, segregating it, dividing us, and having us look after ourselves first rather than anyone else. And that's the real struggle. Now, 
if I just simply stand here and say, now, you should go love your neighbor, and then you come back next week and say, well, Pastor Greg, I did this, and I did this, and I did this. That's no different than the text here, uh, than the, the lawyer wanting to justify himself. That's, that's not where I want us to go here, okay? Justify that, okay, now I'm a good Christian because I'm doing this, right? And if I'm not, well, then I'm not, right? So, but that's, that, that I don't think is the perspective, and that's not the message I want to leave. And the, the message I want to leave is that God is love, right? God is a loving God. This is whose God's being is, is love. And participating in God's being is loving our neighbor. You get that? Participating in God's being and God's love is loving our neighbor. That's, it includes that. And so that includes people close, it includes people far and wide, but it's a, a radical different sense of not what I should, but rather that all-inclusive sense of God's love and being and who God is for you is who God is for others too. And we can talk about that and welcome that conversation and be part of that conversation. So what I'd encourage you to do here is to leave fearless. Go boldly, Star Trek, I'm ending with Star Trek. Go boldly where no one has gone before, right? But uh, to go and, and help build community, encourage community, but simply be the presence of God wherever you go. Amen. Oh, there's a, our hymn of the day is Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love. It's number 708. I invite you to rise as you are able. Together, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, page 105. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to be seated for our prayers. Joining our voices with God's people around the world, let us offer our prayers for those in need. For the church, steadfast and faithful in its mission to proclaim redemption through Christ Jesus. For all ministers of the gospel who proclaim that the word is near, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For areas affected by drought or storms, for livestock and fields, for ranchers and farmers, and for all stewards of the earth, that as God's goodness is revealed in creation, we act with justice toward all creatures. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For lawyers and advocates, for local, regional, and national governments, and for peace throughout the world, that God sends gracious and upright leaders to govern with mercy and truth. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For those who feel ashamed, for those who find it difficult to trust, for the bereaved and the sick, especially we pray for Sami Khalif, Jean White, Ted Reeves, Connie Angel, Wayne and Norma Erickson, Don and Barb Adam, Martha Rooney, Justin Senecar, Helen McGovern. In the Meadows, Ragnall Corey, Lori Dombrowski, Doris Linnis, Alice Smith, Wayne Kelm, Ray Donnelly, Rose Poe, Margaret Dick, Howard Steinley, Burnett Olson, and Inez Fierce. In Riverview, Carl Sundquist, and in Cypress House, Ellie Moe. In Willow Creek Manor, Elevan Semft, and Rivera, Ed and Edna Hapke. In Shonovan, Debbie Lind, and Alfred Nordahl. In Gull Lake, Martha Weinbender. In Cavery, Jenny Fontaine. In Herbert, Terrence Solberg. In Prairie Wind Estates, Margaret Elias, and Marion Solberg. We lift the, these to you, O oh God, and pray that there are, and pray and give you thanks that there are those who are their neighbors, caring and looking after those and visiting those who are sick and away from us. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. We pray for those in our ministerial Christ the Redeemer Parish, our Catholic brothers and sisters in Christ. And we pray that the ongoing ministry continue to grow together. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For those celebrating life uh, celebrations, Abby Slutton, Dominic Curry, Don Adam, Eunice Mork, Darren Schwartz, Larry Straub, Pastor Pat Simonson. Anniversaries, Bob and Arlie Newfeld, Lori and Barry Regeer, Kelsey and Kendra Brandt, Art and Jean Straub, Ryan and Wendy Bussey. We lift these to you and give you thanks for that gift of life and love. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the members of the body of Christ in this place, for those who do good works in our midst, for those who are visiting and those who are absent, that the Holy Spirit guide all the journeys of our lives. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For our ancestors who have inspired us by their lives of faith, that thankful for their witness, we can confidently proclaim our salvation. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For all refugees and those who are on the road, those who are journeying, we pray, O oh God, that you go with them and open our eyes when they are in need. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Merciful God, you hear the prayers of your people even before they are spoken. We commend these and all, all our prayers to you, trusting in your abundant mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another.
I'm going to sneak down here. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Keith. Peace be with you, Frida. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, you Marlillis. Peace be with you. 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 Here I come. <laughs> Peace be with you. We will continue our service with the offering. invite you to rise as we receive our offering and sing our offertory, Create in Me. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray together the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Amen. Our sending hymn, Oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing, number 886. you to be seated for a couple of announcements. So Pastor Linda continues to be on holidays this next week. And so uh, until, until the 22nd, she's on holidays. And uh, we're having a change in office hours too, just for the summer. So Wednesdays and Thursdays, we're planning on the office being open from 9 through 5 and just closed at the noon hour. So that's just works out better for Connie and her life and trying to do some holidays as well. The education for everyone, that's still back there. I think that's been going well. I tried the game back there too. Did you try the game? Jumping game? You gotta try that. I have witnesses that I accomplished the goal. <laughs> and I didn't hurt myself either. <laughs> so far. <laughs> Um, but uh, that education thing back there, I for sure want to lift up. Uh, equipping a school, training a teacher, very important in, in the, our world today. And how we can be a neighbor as well. Uh, mark your calendars this Saturday. Irene and Walt Baim are inviting us all to come uh, and uh, celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary. I didn't see your names in the anniversary list. Your anniversary must be next week, is it? Like, no, oh, next month. Oh, yeah. So you're a little ahead of the schedule. There we go. But the date worked out. So, yeah. Okay. So, 2 to 4 p.m. So, uh, you please come and celebrate with them. Other announcements anybody wants lifted up? These are all in here, so if not, I invite you to go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.